Hi there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and another quick HDR tutorial for you. I've got a few tips today and uh, let me exit out here the uh, light box mode here. You can see I'm in Lightroom 5 and I've got a whole jumble of images here and these are the raw frames here if I turn on my flags and I show you the red images. I've got the darkest image here and then I've got some medium images and then the brightest image here. So actually uh, one of these middle images right here has probably got enough dynamic range if I wanted to just process this one image. I could preserve the highlights there and I could dig into the shadows here but one problem that I've found I'll run into is it just takes too much processing and burning and dodging to get the highlights perfect and the shadows perfect in the same exposure and so I actually prefer just blending an HDR image so that I get great overall tone and then burning and dodging from there so let's exit out here so you can see some of the other images basically what I did was I came up with a ton of different JPEG HDR images and this one you can see is kind of terrible it's blue it's really dark but the highlights are preserved and these ones are a little bit brighter you can see uh, it's got oh, it's still bluish but you can see this has got great detail here but then if I zoom in you can see the HDR just totally overcooked this highlight here and it's just blown out to pink and same thing with uh, some of these other JPEGs here. You can see I've got some better color correction and, and detail in these uh, foreground areas. But again, that sky is just really, really overblown. And look at this next image. Again, it's back to that bluish tint. Anyways, here's one that has great overall preservation. I mean, the highlights are doing okay. They're still a little bit gone. But anyways, it looks good overall. But now it's just so kind of, it's so flat and it's just not cutting it for me you know so really quick let's talk about what I would do to arrive at this final image here where you can see I've got beautiful detail and you know color and contrast it really pops in the foreground but I've got highlight preservation you can see here of course it's gonna be hard to tell if you don't have a perfectly calibrated monitor but these highlights are just barely cutting it while being basically as saturated as they possibly could be without blowing out you can see I've preserved a little bit of detail here on the histogram if I'm gonna export this as, as an sRGB color space I definitely want a little bit of empty space up here because remember, Lightroom is working in that pro photo color space, which is very, very different from sRGB. Anyways, let's pull up. I've got one raw frame here. These ones are all kind of processed to be a little bit flat. You can see I've uh, just muted them overall. I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to control or command click to select all four of these. I'm going to right click on them, click on export, and then I'm going to go to Photomatix Pro. I'm not going to click align images because I did use a tripod, but I am going to click remove ghosts because I've got all of this action going on here in the waves. And that's one of the very, very awesome things about Photomatix is that it is by far one of the best programs at avoiding horribly messed up uh, ghosts from things that are moving around from shot to shot. So anyways, I really want to select remove ghosts and I set it to automatically and detection high. That's just my favorite setting. You can try the different settings. Anyways, of course, I want to set it to automatically re-import. I'm going to set it to TIFF 16-bit and let's click export and let it run and go into Photomatix. Now here we are in Photomatix and I've already got the settings pulled up because I just processed the image previously but basically what you can see here is that I've got this image looking great overall but basically what you can see is I've got the image processed for the foreground elements and the sky is actually still blown out like I was saying I had so much difficulty with so what I've what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with an HDR blend that looks like this and then I'm going to take it back into Lightroom and I'm going to process this image, this TIFF image, with another reprocessed raw image that preserves these highlights as much as I can. So anyways, in general, let's talk a little bit about what I would do here in Photomatix. Now I've got these settings all dialed in the way I want it for this particular image, but in general, 
My favorite starting point is this option right here, natural. It's one of the presets that comes with it. And you can see that it actually did a great job of preserving the highlights here and you know getting great detail overall, but it's just not popping very much compared to, let me go back here and see if I can go back to my previous conversion. Yeah, you can see again, what I've done is I've just kind of boosted this overall so it's a little bit brighter, a little bit more punchy. Um, so let's go back to natural and see. Basically what I want to do is pull my saturation way up all the way. So I'm going to forsake these highlights because I've, I know that this image just has such a saturated sunset that I'm going to try and do this later and fix this later back in Photoshop. Anyways, I'm liking what it's done to the foreground here. All I really want to do is try and beef up, the, brighten up these uh, these foreground elements here. So let's uh, just start, start tweaking the sliders. What do we got? Whoa, this local contrast slider is what I call the wacky looking HDR slider. Some of you may like it. I don't really care for that look, so I'm going to keep it kind of natural, somewhere low. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the midtones and I'm going to brighten it up like that. It's going to flatten the image a little bit overall, but then I can, I'll tone it down a little bit and I'll go, I'll go to, I'll bring up the black clipping just a tiny bit, and that's going to give me the overall pop, but brightness that I want in most of the foreground elements. So since I already created a good solid version of this, I'm just going to click X and go out. Oh, it's going to yell at me and say, hey, I messed up. Yeah, that's okay. This right here is the TIFF file that I came up with. And you can see it's got those tones that I was talking about. But this sky is just completely toasted. So here's what I've done. I've gone over, where is it, my, uh, my raw image here. This is an NEF. It's the same image as this one here, 2776. This is the, what it looked like, and this is what I processed it to be so that I could blend it with this image to look like this final image here where you can see you can see the highlight detail just fine. And of course, you've got the great foreground detail. Now, there's a, a little bit of work done onto this TIFF image after I've blended those two layers in Photoshop. But let's go into Photoshop really quick and let me show you what's going on with it. I'm just going to hit Control E and bring that up and it's going to do a edit original so I can show you the layers. Now here's the two layers in Photoshop. If I hide this, you can see what the foreground looked like. Or if I hide this, if I hold down Shift and click on that layer mask, you can see this is what the highlights looked like. And then this is what I brought them to. Now this image is still kind of flat, so I'm going to close this and click No. I don't want to uh, save those changes. And so I bring it back into Lightroom. And let me click Reset so now you can see. This is what it looked like as it was flat. And then what I did was I carefully burned and dodged. I just hit Control Z there to undo that reset. So here's all of the burning and dodging. Let me hit K really quick to show you a lot of those. What I've done was I've created one brush to kind of do a little bit of brightening. And I've got a brush that I created for myself called Highlight Saver that uh, brings down the highlights, but it keeps the shadows boosted a little bit. And then over here, I've got another brush that's just kind of doing some overall enhancement. I've got, it's from the SLO Lounge preset system called Sky Cloud Ocean Enhancer. And for example, if I were to just delete that brush, you could see it's just, let me hit Control Z there to undo that. It's just making a tiny bit of difference overall. Then next over here, I have a couple brushes that are brightening and enhancing the water a little bit, as well as the sky, just a little bit of more saturation. Anyways, this is the critical part right up here. And what I've done is, let's. this brush is the critical one. What I've done is I've used a saturation enhancement up here in the sky, but I was very careful to not brush it into this particular area here that is so close to clipping the highlights. And if I zoom in, now again, you have to have a perfectly calibrated monitor to notice the difference probably. But if I brush over this, you'll see how that highlight starts to clip if, if I just go barely onto it just a tiny bit. So I'm going to hit Control Z or Command Z to undo that a little bit. And you can see I'm just barely cutting it super close with that blown highlight or that clipped red channel. And once again, remember, I'm working in a color space that Lightroom is using. It's using the ProPhoto color space that is not very accurate compared to most online print labs and, of course, the Internet in general. So you might be thinking, well, there's still a gap here at the edge of my histogram, why am I calling this blown out? Well, the answer to that is, let me hit S here in Lightroom so that you can see the proof preview set to sRGB. And you can see just right there, if I were to export this image as an sRGB image, I'd start to clip this highlight. Now, I can, I'm can i okay with losing just a tiny bit, 
But anyways, I'm going to hit S again to hide that. That is why I'm being so super careful with this highlight. I'm going to hold down my space bar and click so I can zoom out. That's why I'm being so super careful with this overall area and just trying to not blow it out and not clip that red channel. I want it to be very vibrant and saturated and I could probably crank it up a little bit more if I wanted it to just look you know very juicy for the internet but if I'm actually going to print the image I need to be very careful what profile I use you know when I'm sending it to the lab and what my clipping looks like based on the proof preview. So basically what I'm trying to say is be very careful with your highlights. You can achieve great saturation, but you don't want your images, your HDRs, to have that clipped flat look. Even though, even though it's super saturated, you'll just have this patch of pure pink or whatever in the sky and the print won't look right. So anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you in our next tutorial. Take care.